All right, guys, on today's video, I want to share with you five reasons why your nursery will fail. So what do we want to do? We want to avoid things that are going to cause us to fail. So today I'm going to kind of take a little bit of a different angle on this video and think about what are some things that we can, that we can know, what are some things that we can learn that we want to say, I want to avoid that at all costs. Well, I'm going to share these five things with you today and maybe they'll be helpful to you in starting your nursery. The first reason that your nursery is going to fail is because getting it started, you're going to spend way too much money trying to get started. Now, right up here, I did a video last year, and here you can you can have a look at it here. It's a video on how to start a nursery for under one thousand dollars, and I showed you a process that you can work through. And now the numbers are rough, and they may have changed a little bit since last year, but you'll get the idea. But what you don't want to do is think that you've got to buy every conceivable thing that a nursery could ever possibly use before you can get started. So you don't need to buy truckloads of fertilizer and truckloads of mulch and thousands and thousands of feet of ground cover and greenhouses and irrigation systems. You don't need any of that to get a nursery started. You just need a few basic things. And one way to be on a bad path towards failure in starting a nursery is to spend too much money too fast and to be in way over your head too soon. And you want to make sure that you avoid that at all costs. A second reason that your nursery could possibly fail when you're getting started out is the exact opposite reason from number one, and that is that you're spending too little on your nursery. Now, it's a good thing to get by as cheaply as you can with things, but at some point you got to realize that being a cheapskate is not going to get you where you want to go. You know, a principle that we actually find in the Bible is if we sow bountifully, we will reap bountifully. So we want to make sure we're putting a lot into what we're doing. We want to put a lot of effort in and we want to put an adequate mo uh, amount of money into what we're doing. So you got to kind of find a balance between spending too much and spending too little. Let me show you an example of something you can get by with. So for example, when you're potting any number of plants at all, you're going to have to figure out a system that works for potting. And you can build or buy really elaborate, large potting tables, potting benches to pile potting soil on to make this a really comfortable part of working in your nursery. Well, my potting setup is as simple as this. I have a wheelbarrow, I have a bucket, and I have two sawhorses with a broken small tabletop on top of them. And I didn't buy any of this stuff. This is just junk I had laying around. And I've been using this system for however many years now that we've been doing this and have potted thousands and thousands and thousands of plants using this simple makeshift setup. Or I could have spent four or five or six hundred dollars and built or bought a much more elaborate table, but I made this work. So it's an example of not spending too much money. And everybody who's starting a nursery or who's working in a nursery has got to find that balance, has got to find kind of that sweet spot between not being too cheap and putting money in the right places versus being unwilling to spend anything. So every person is going to look different in that. What you have to spend on a nursery might be different than what I have to spend. You may have a lot more or a lot less, but it's one of those things that can cause your nursery to fail if you don't plan and think through your expenditures on startup and how you're going to keep your, your expenses under control, yet spending enough to get your nursery off to a strong start. One of the things that I do not recommend you going cheap on at all is this ground cover. You have got to have ground cover to control your weeds. Now you may have a different setup than I have. You may have a massive concrete slab somewhere that's not being used or a massive gravel area or something that's not being used so that this is not really a problem for you. Well for me, sitting pots down on the bare ground, sitting them, sitting them in the grass, my plants are rooting through that in just a matter of weeks, rooting into the ground, and before you know it, they're completely overtaken with weeds. Your potted plants have become a part of the ground, and it is an absolute disaster, and it happens very, very quickly. So I had to find a solution. My solution was putting a whole bunch of money into this ground cover. It has been an absolute lifesaver. I hate weeds. They are the scourge of the earth in the nursery, and it's worth the investment to cover your ground. A third reason that your nursery may fail is that you get discouraged by problems that you have. And when I say problems that you have, I'm talking about things that come up because you don't know what you're doing. Well, I don't know what I'm doing either. And one of the things that I've had to learn is that there's just things that are going to happen that you're just going to have to count them as lost. You're going to have to figure out how to work around them and you're going to have to adapt what you're doing 
all as part of the learning process of having a nursery. So for example, I, I can't even remember exactly what plant it was, but I bought in some plants one time because I found some pictures of them online and I thought, oh wow, those are beautiful. Those will thrive in my area, or uh, <laughs> those will thrive. I'll be able to sell those really well. And I potted them and they sat there and sat there and sat there and sat there and they never grew and they never looked right and they never looked healthy. And I went and learned a little bit more about them and realized that they weren't even hardy in my area. They were hardy like down to zone six and I'm in zone seven. And this was a plant for the far northern United States. And I just wound up having to throw them all in the compost pile. Well, it's easy when things like that happen to get discouraged because you know you've lost some money. You know you've made a bad choice. You know you didn't do something right. It's easy to just quit and to act like, well, I'm just a rookie and this isn't for me and I don't know what I'm doing. But part of being a backyard nursery, part of having a backyard nursery is constantly changing, constantly adapting, constantly learning, constantly figuring out what you can do better. And if you're not really willing to do that, like if you're defeated easily, if you're one to just quit because something doesn't go well, you're going to hate this. Um, you're going to absolutely hate trying to grow plants because the fact is plants are going to die. Uh, things are not going to go well. Weather's not going to cooperate. Uh, you're going to fail to water things because an emergency came up in your life and you couldn't do it. Um, your dog's going to get into stuff and destroy things or a skunk's going to get in your yard and tear up all kinds of things. Things just happen. And you can't let that stuff discourage you. And if you do, I can guarantee you your nursery is going to fail. A fourth reason your nursery is going to fail is because you don't have any patience with growing plants. Now here's the thing that we got to understand and that we got to hear about plants. And that is that it takes time to grow a plant into a sellable product. I think I shared with y'all in the last video or two videos ago that we did this for three or four seasons before we ever paid ourselves anything at all. Now you certainly don't have to do it that way. And there are ways that you can begin making money on this much faster than we did. But we like to propagate most of our own plants, or at least a lot of our own plants, and that's just a process to do that. So I wanted to show you this tray of hostas that are just emerging. I just propagated, I just divided these last year. And they were tiny, I mean, they were tiny, tiny hostas when I divided them last year. And I think I commented even in the video that I made that these, were, that these would be two seasons away from being ready to sell. And a couple of different people commented, are you telling me that it takes two years to make six dollars. Now here's the thing with plants. Well on this particular tray, and I have dozens of them, I would say no, it took me two years to make six dollars times 18 times many trays of that. So for hostas, which we do a lot of as you guys are well aware, they are a growing project. Yes, if you're going to, to divide them into small hostas, it takes time to grow them. Backyard growing is not for the person who needs to get rich quick or really who needs to get rich ever. Seems like everybody today is looking to make a buck by the end of the week or the end of the month and you need money now and everything's quick. If that's you, that's fine. But this is not for you. Growing plants is a process. Even if you buy in small plants, it's going to take at least a season most of the time to get them to sellable size. Now once you do that and once you have that process in place for a couple of years, it just turns into you're always growing, you're always selling, you're always growing and you're always selling. And you don't really think of it in terms of, well, it's taken me two years to get these that far or three years to get that far. You don't think of it that way. You just think of it as it's propagation season, so let's propagate. It's sell season, so let's sell. But if you have no patience, for waiting and working through the process, you're gonna fail at this, I can guarantee it. The fifth reason that your nursery is going to fail is because you've got tons of plants grown, you've kinda of learned how to get them growing, and now you can't sell them. So I'm standing here in the middle of a couple of hundred green giant arborvitas, there's another hundred over there, there's a bunch more over there and over there, and that's just one variety of plant. So I've gotta sell all these things, or this is worthless doing all this. It's expensive. It's a waste of time. And, you know, somebody will pat you on the back and say, hey, you've really got a green thumb. Well, who cares if that just leads to a bunch of waste? So you've got to be able to sell the plants that you grow. 
Now, the way that I do that, and I've shared this pretty extensively with you, is through, or primarily, it's through Facebook and through Facebook Marketplace and by occasionally even paying for a Facebook ad to have like a, a plant sale in my driveway. But you have got to learn how to work social media and you've got to learn how to sell your plants and get your message out there to people that you have plants to sell. One of the awesome things about plants is if you will take great pictures of your plants, like these plants right here look awesome and somebody's gonna see, wow, he's selling those for six or seven dollars or whatever the price point may be, they are gonna be knocking your door down to come and buy your plants because people love to buy beautiful plants at a good price from somebody's backyard or from a giant commercial nursery somewhere, it doesn't matter. People are eager to buy your plants and I've never had any trouble selling plants by making sure that I just let people know what I have and it's as simple as that but if I'm not willing to do that if I'm embarrassed about the fact that I have a nursery in my backyard if I feel self-conscious in that I'm not some nursery guy who really knows what he's doing and you know that people are going to come ask me questions about my plants and I'm not going to know how to answer them and I'm going to feel dumb if I can't get over all of that then I'm not ever going to be able to sell any of this. So we have to work on selling our plants. Facebook is your friend. Whatever social media people use in your area, social media will be your friend. If maybe you live in a small town somewhere who has a, you know, for sale, for sale physical paper periodical that people are still using, use that to your benefit. Let people know what you have and they will come buy plants from you. So guys, I hope that these tips are helpful for you today. There's probably five more that I could give you, but these are just five reasons why your nursery is going to fail, why my nursery is going to fail. So we got to address these things and we got to be aware of these things. Love all of you. Thanks for watching and I hope you're having a great day.